Hey guys, this is me uh, using the uh, getting to the uh, Hag Tower and unrest. And in case y'all don't know how to get there, this is me walking up the stairs. I'm on my enchanter, um, level 35, I think. It's hard to see from that thumbnail. Um, this is on P99. This is walking through the fire room, and I'm trying to take down the uh, Hag Tower. I think I just got through having a bad pull, so this is me coming back upstairs seeing that there's two hags up but there's no middle spawn so this is how I deal with those two when I first come upstairs as I lull them both sorry for the mouse being off center I'm getting get rid of that in future videos but I'm gonna lull them both real quick On That's a good way to get nervous. And instead of low on the other one, I guess, I, I just go ahead straight into charming. So I'm going to go ahead and charm this one, or mez it first so I can tash it, and then charm it. This is how I like to break the room. It seems to be more reliable than other ways of doing it. Next rock. And these guys have really low hit points. I'm surprised I didn't nullify them first. There you go. Um, but they have two buffs. They have their major shielding and their uh, rune. And I want to be able to get rid of both of them. Because that, like, half, takes off half their hit points, basically. The rune and major shielding. And then my pet can tear them up. Throw in a nuke. And I don't have to worry about my pet getting rocked. So, what I like to do here is split the camp a little bit. So instead of taking out my pet right now, I'm going to wait for a minute. Because I never know when that middle spawn's going to pop. It's on a different timer. The ones on the left and on the right are 6 minute timer. The ones in the middle I think are like 22 minute timers. So I'm trying to get my regentless rune going. Just in case charm breaks any second. And normally if the middle guy's up, it depends on what's up. The middle guy can be a hag, it can be a... Uh, Werewolf, it can be a Greater Dark Bone or uh, the named uh, Undead Knight of Unrest. If it ends Undead Knight of Unrest, I immediately charm him just to get um, where I don't have to worry about him and his pet at the same time. And uh, I send him after the, the hags. Because he can harm touch, even though he looks like he's a warrior um, in the wiki. Uh, he harm touches, so that stings. Watch my pet seeing who's out the door. If you all don't know and you have a charmed pet or a normal pet, if there's a mob right outside you, it's going to track and always point to the n nearest mob to you. So she's freaking out trying to figure out who the nearest mob is. So like I said, normally I would just burn my pet down, but I want the spawn time split. As you can see in the top right hand corner, I've got Gina working on some spawn timers just to be able to keep track of this camp especially now I'm going to go ahead and break my pet and then nuke him down stun him stun him again nuke him and a little tiny baby nuke She never worn down my rune. So the best way that I like doing this camp is to have my own pet out. Most people think en enchanter pets are garbage, and for the most part they're right. But for this camp, it's ideal, and I'll show you why. So 
hardest thing with this camp is just keeping up with the mana for the runes and the and the spawns in a specific timing. So when I get a pet out like this, he's multi-purpose. One, when I go to nuke something, I'll nuke him twice, and uh, that'll be enough to, to take most of the monster down. But the pet takes care of the last little bit. So you'll see what what I can do is I can sit there and nuke him a couple times. The pet takes care of him takes care of the last little bit but another really big reason to use a pet in this camp is in case that undead night of unrest pops and you have your pet in the middle um, and you'll see me walk forward and walk back just to make sure my pet's sitting in the middle of the camp the undead night of unrest always harm touches the pet first um, and just because it's in closer proximity and it's a lower level than me and uh, I'd much rather have my pet absorb the harm touch than me so, as you can tell, I still got two minutes on my spawn timer, but I'm still not sure when that middle spawn's gonna pop. So I'm just gonna get my normal or my berserker strength going when I can, and then I'll probably put my rune back up. It's always good to have that safety measure, and you don't have to have the troll illusion here, but occasionally I get nuked, and it's nice to have a little bit of regen after the uh, runer's down. Not the most exciting of camps, but it's a unique camp that one of the very few I actually use my pet instead of just charming things down. Um, so it's less stress. You don't have to worry about the your pet charm breaking at any second. I had that Gina trigger for camp checking. Uh, screwed up so you'll see that throughout the video so sorry about that I always like to get my berserker, berserker spirit about 30 seconds to a minute before my next pop just so I don't have to worry about it when the spawn appears and the way I like doing this camp's a little different than the rest of the people I've seen online with um, other enchanters charm in this room, but um, I like to mez him first. And if I mez him first, I can get right up next to him, hit him with my nuke, uh, um, and then he tries to hit me. And when he hits me, my pet starts getting engaged. And then I chain stun him and get one last nuke on him. And a lot of times I don't even have to root him. All right, here comes the next spawn, exactly six minutes. Take him out. So start off with a mez so he can't buff himself or herself. And I get my nuke down. You see that that wakes up. And then I stun him, stun him again, and then a baby nuke. And he's dead. Easy peasy. And he didn't even burn through my berserker rune or my regular rune. Got another minute or so for the next spawn. This is my first video trying to figure out how iMovie works, so bear with me. Pretty easy camp. You can start from 34 and go all the way up to 40. Um, pretty reliably. Only time it gets hairy is when uh, that middle spawn spawns the undead night of unrest. Also, one thing you absolutely don't want to do is sit next to the door because there's another hag that walks up and down that door. And she will walk right through that door and aggro you if you're too close. So I always like to sit out on the edge right here. I always like to sit across from where the mob's going to spawn because if you're sitting this far away, they won't aggro you. Unless that 
Unless you're talking about that middle one. P99 having to worry about coin weight. And again, 30 seconds away from the spawn timing. Get my Berserker Spirit up. Strength. Take him out. Pop. Mez also stops them if they do happen to be mid charming or mid casting their buffs. I don't have to worry about their buff completing. So the cut engages. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but sometimes he can finish off the last little bit. So he's got 14% left. And root him. Pet finishes off the rest. Even with him missing a lot, sometimes I'll wait for 30 and that'll be just enough. spot pops but you see where my pet is he's right there in the middle that's where you want him to be in case he that middle pops and he's a undead knight then you want him there this is pretty much the only camp that I've played in that the Gina timers are just really really handy just because you need to be able to keep track of your timer so you don't get surprised. You can do it on your phone if you want to, but I get forgetful with that. You can do this camp earlier than 34, but 34 is a big deal because you get your new nuke. And with your new nuke, you can hit like a Mack truck for an enchainer at this level. That's me doing my rune again, because I don't know when that middle one's going to pop. Um, and it's better to have it up than not, especially when I'm getting close to being full mana. Yep, there it is. There's arm touch. Nuke him. He's going to be pissed at me. Stun him. Stun him again. I'm going to nuke off. and a half in the other pop. It's good to know that. One final nuke. My pet's gonna get eaten here in a second. And I got myself a bloodstained mantle. He also has a bloodstained chest piece, I think. That's a good, like, shaman chess piece. So now I still got 30 seconds or so on that. Or, I guess that's 48 seconds. On the other one, so that burned a chunk of my mana, so I gotta get my mana back. But I'm gonna probably do my Berserker Spirit or Strength here in a second. And uh, be ready for the next one. Sorry for being that so loud. Never could figure out how to get the bag volume to be less than everything else. It always seems to be way louder than everything else. I think he'd burn through my rune. Looks that way. Take him out. Here I am ready for the next spawn. <laughs>
do happen to get a couple one-handers, I hand them to my pet so he starts dual wielding. But I don't stress about it. I don't carry a bunch of torches or nothing. I'm a little low on mana, but I still got 30 seconds or so. The reason the last trigger didn't uh, fire off was because my pet isn't in my named trigger here. I gotta go in and change my name for him. Later on, I start using some regular expressions for a whole list of pet names, and then it can be either one of them, but I'm not there yet today on this video. But that's essentially it. Um, I'll cut forward to something a little more exciting now. Alright guys, this is me coming back. Um, I'll show you something a little bit more interesting. Again, another Undead Night of Unrest. But taking out one final festering hag right before the next spawn. And it can get kind of exciting when that night pops and pretty taxing on the mana. She's got 17% left, which is a good chunk. It's going to be hard for my pet to burn through without getting a little bit of help. Pet can handle about two nukes and then gets obliterated. Looks like my pet resisted that one, thank God. So I'm trying to position myself between me and the me and the knight. So I'm trying to get a little bit of mana back before he pops again. There he is. I was going to mez him, but I was like, I need to get rid of this harm touch, so I waited for him to harm touch my pet. And then nuke him. He's pissed at me. Stun him off. Get one more nuke off of him while he's stunned. And then get a root off. Well, guess I'm going to anarch him. As you can see, he's tearing me up. And I got a good chunk of mana off me. Got my bloodstained tunic. And I'm gonna get off. So. Illusion drop. Alright, so this is me coming back again. Showing you a middle spawn that's not an undead knight, but this can show you how things can get a little hairy sometimes. Got spawn timers off a little bit. Got this guy coming up. But luckily the other one didn't aggro. So I'm going to burn him down as quick as I can. Hoping my pet can handle the rest of them. Root drop. Interrupted. Get a baby nuke to knock him off. Go right into Mez in this one. Get rid of its buffs. Nullify magic gets rid of two of them. So that's her major shielding in the first rune. While my mez is ticking away, I decided to try to get my burning berserker strength up once. I got a few seconds left on my nuke. He's nuking me, it's a nuke race. Burn through my berserker rune. Did not handle this one well at all. About half life. So here I am thinking I'm safe. So I go over here and like an idiot I walk over too close to that door I was telling you about earlier. And I got aggroed. So there's a hag. So instead of dealing with this, I think I tried to nuke. And I got to resist. And I was like, screw this crap. 
two resists. Three resists. And I said, screw it, I'm out. Luckily, the uh, hag was on my pet, because one more nuke to me and I'd have been toast. So it just goes to show how quickly and easily things can go south if uh, you're not careful where you're standing. 